our dear viewer, thank you so much for following this special edition coming to you right here on SABC. My name is Majur Cholkor and in this special edition, we're coming to you live from Juba City Council. And remember, this week there has been a lot of developmental activities happening within Juba City Council, including a governatorial decree uh, bringing the commissioner of Lanya County to be the acting mayor of Juba City Council. In this special edition, we were going to have his worship, Emmanuel Kamis Richard, the commissioner of Lanya County, and currently the acting mayor of Juba City Council, with us to explore more about his role in his county and also as the acting commissioner. We, you have been seeing in the different part of Juba City Council what he has been doing in a short time that has been acting mayor in Juba City Council. Honorable, allow me to say it, I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have this privilege to host you on SABC. You're most welcome. Uh, well, uh, before we look into your role right now as the acting mayor, your word of greeting to people of South Sudan. Thank you so much, the SSBC crew. Uh, I am honored to have you in my office today. And I want to assure you that as long as I continue as the acting mayor of Juba City Council, my door will be open to the SSBC team, which is the official government uh, media house through which the rest of the media houses must be accessing information through you. Uh, I want to appreciate the Governor of Central Equatorial State, Comrade Emmanuel Adil Anthony, for the trust he has given me as I serve the people of South Sudan at my capacity as Commissioner of Lanya County and the Acting Mayor of Juba City Council. I want to tell the people of South Sudan that Juba is the national capital of the Republic of South Sudan. In that, practically, it is collectively owned by the people of South Sudan. So during my term of office as acting mayor, I want to assure the people of South Sudan that in Juba City Council, all of us are equal, feel proud as a South Sudanese, who is in Juba, all of you are entitled to equal rights, and it is our responsibility to work together to support our president, to support the governor, to ensure that within a short time we must transport, uh, transform Juba from a garbage dumping ground to one of the clean cities in the East African region, in Africa, and we need to put on a long-term plan on how to make Juba one of the best cities in the world. And I believe that a South Sudanese taking into account our history of resilience, persistence in our liberation struggle for a very long time, there's nothing that we cannot do. What is important is that we need to have the correct mindset, we need to have the correct leaders in place, and we put into use effectively the resources that we have as people of South Sudan in Juba City Council. Well, thank you so much, uh, your watch for your word of greetings and also some insight about how you feel to be a South Sudanese in this capacity. Before we look at your role right now as acting mayor, tell the viewers, how did you left Lanya County? How are the people there? Uh, until now that I speak to you and the people of South Sudan, I'm sitting here in two offices as the Commissioner of Lanya County and the Acting Mayor, and I want to assure the people of South Sudan that the security situation, both in Lanya County and Juba City Council, is relatively stable, and uh, there are institutions that are responsible for the day-to-day -day security of the people of Lanya County, and uh, let our people rest assured that there are no gaps. I'm in direct control of the situation on the ground, with the security forces and the administration. And the people of Lanya County are busy. This is the second agricultural season starting. They are busy with their farms, where people who are returning from the refugee camps. Thank you so much for the insight about how you leave people of Lanya County. And now sitting in the office, as you stated, you are sitting in two seats. The officer 
Acting Mayor of Juba City Council and the Commissioner of Luanya County. When you receive the news that you are given this assignment by the Governor of Central Equatoria as the Acting Mayor of Juba City Council, how did you take the initiative? What was your feeling and what do you want to come and change? Thank you so much. Number one, I have been in the government. And for those who may not know me, I've been working in the government for the last 20 years. And I know most of the problems. So I believe that the leadership of the state that I've been working under for the last uh, good time knows our individual abilities and competencies as members of the government. Uh, I also want to tell the people of South Sudan that I'm a member of the SPLM. Uh, so my party, my leadership knows my ability, my competence. And uh, they entrusted me this responsibility. Yes, it is a challenge, but it is not a threat. Because one, I'm aware of the six fundamental problems facing the people of South Sudan in Juba City Council. So knowing that, I have my own approaches that I will apply to ensure that we address those fundamental problems that are facing the people of South Sudan in Juba City Council. If you don't mind, maybe you can, <coughs> you mind, maybe you can mention two. And not only two, I have to tell the people of South Sudan the problems that they face in Juba City. Number one, Juba is dirty. Why is Juba City dirty? This is what we need to address. Number two, there is rise in urban crimes. The Nikas, the Toronto, and all those criminal groups is very high. Number three, our people, particularly our indigenous entrepreneurs, who are carrying out businesses in Juba City have been crying, complaining of high taxes that are imposed on them by the authorities of Juba City Council. This has led to the collapse of businesses of South Sudanese who are trying to struggle to sustain their families. This is a very serious problem. Uh, number three, that we need to address. Juba, as an urban city, have resources. So we need to address issues of management of public resources that are collected in Juba City so that those resources are effectively put to proper use to deliver services to the people. Number four, there is poor road network in Juba City. Juba is one of the cities that is well planned, but some people interfered with the road networks in the city, blocking some roads, building on roads, even making security response very difficult. There are areas where completely security patrols cannot cover. Not because there are no roads, but because some individuals deliberately block those roads. Now, without access roads, how do you deliver services? This is problem number four. Problem number five is whether the Juba City Council has been delivering services to the people of South Sudan who are here or not. This needs to be addressed because the authority that is designated responsibility by law to administer day-to-day -day delivery of services to the people in the city is the City Council. And finally, number six that we need to address is whether Juba City as the national capital of South Sudan is the seat of the government of Central Equatoria and the headquarters of the city council reflects the ethnic diversity of the people of South Sudan. To qualify it as a national capital of the Republic of South Sudan. So these issues need to be addressed. Number seven, which is very small, is how do we protect the foreign domination of the private sector in Juba City. The Constitution of the Republic of South Sudan, Article 37, C, mandates all levels of governments 
to promote and protect indigenous entrepreneurs. Because these are the owners of the country and they, they must be key players in the economy of the country. So these things need to be addressed. Yes. So within my short period of time, I'll be making robust attempts using short and long term approaches to ensure that we address those critical aspects that affects the day to day lives of the people of South Sudan in Juba City Council. Yes, Honorable. Yes, Honorable. Uh, thank you so much for mentioning all you have mentioned. Uh, citizens have observed and have been following from social media and how the media howled, seen your appointment or your assignment as acting mayor. Uh, we have seen general cleanliness in city, in the whole of Juba City, in which uh, people are asking a question, why do you start with cleanliness? Number one, Juba's national capital is the image of the Republic of South Sudan. Just like a human being, you have to be clean. You have to take shower every day. Every morning you wake up, you have to wash your face. So keeping Juba clean is very important as it guarantees the health security of the people who are living in the city. So this is compulsory. You are my Where are you going to get resources to facilitate these uh, young women and youth that are involved in cleaning Juba City? The city council as a level of government has sources of revenues. The revenues that are collected are public money. And one of the ways to give back to the people is to use the resources that are collected in the city council to deliver those services to the people. The city council is a local government and it has four sources of revenue. Number one, we have local collections within the sources of revenue of the city council. Number two, we have grants that are to come from the state or national government to the city council. Number three, we have donations that can come from partners and individuals who are willing to provide collective uh, corporate responsibility. So the local government, the city council, has resources. You see, in my lifestyle, I don't believe that there's no money. And I don't believe in failure. So your worship, how frequently is the cleanness going to be happening in Juba City? It's going to be on a daily basis. It's going to be continuous. We are sweeping our house. In your house, every day you wake up, your wife sweeps your compound. So cleaning is going to be daily. It's not going to be weekly. Because if you allow two, three days, it creates a gap and the city becomes dirty. So this cleaning that we're launching is going to be continuous daily. So that we cannot leave a gap and create an opportunity for piling of garbage in the city. So it's going to be daily. Just like sweeping your own house. The city is a house. So, Honorable, you have mentioned a lot of things that you said you have a strategic way or approaches to handle this situation of Juba City. And looking at your title, Acting Mayor, does it give you a free sleep at night that you will accomplish your mission, like being acting? I'm not worried. Because I'm given full authority, I'm exercising the powers and functions of the mayor is provided for in section 57 of the local government act. So uh, I enjoy my sleep. Those who are gossiping is their business. I'm going on with my normal life as a human being and I'm discharging my duties. Depending on the period of time that I'll be sitting here, I want the people of South Sudan to see the impact. I don't want to tell them I will do one, two, three, four. But those areas that I've mentioned are the ones I'm going to address. Because I know the problem and I have the solutions. If there is a challenge that requires resources, I will meet the governor and I also request the governor to appeal to the president that this is the national capital of the Republic of South Sudan. So it is necessary that the office of the president supports the state government 
with the resources that will be channeled to the city council to address these areas. Because anything that we do in Juba as a city of the country is a national interest of the Republic and the people of South Sudan. Therefore, if I have a challenge of resources, I will not hesitate to raise it to the governor. And if the state can address it, can give us that grant, it's good if the state is also faced with challenges. I believe that our president will be willing to support the government of Central Equatoria, to support city council. Your Worship, um, you mentioned seven points in which we thought they are very important. And one most important thing that I pick from all this is how you're going to handle the high taxation in the market to impact the life of the common citizen in South Sudan. Yes, Juba City to be clean is the face of the nation. It's very important for South Sudanese and outsiders who are coming to see how Juba City is. So let's come and find out shortly how you're going to tackle this situation of high taxation so that other common South Sudanese there can feel that there is leader in Juba City Council who is looking into their livelihood. And dear viewer, thank you so much for following this special edition coming to you right here on SABC. Is the man, his worship, the acting mayor of Juba City Council, Emmanuel Kamis, and also who double as the commissioner of Lanya County. We are tackling the issues in Juba City Council. What is going to do? And you have been witnessing, if you are within Juba City, what he has been doing in the last few days that he has been in the office. Let's have a break. We'll be right back shortly. Welcome back, dear viewer. Thank you so much for following this special edition coming to you right here on SBC. Continue with us is East Worship, the acting mayor of Juba City Council, Emmanuel Kamiz Richard, and who also double as the commissioner of Lanya County. Honorable Your Worship, welcome back. Thank you so much. Yes, as we went for break, I did mention that you mentioned seven very important things, and common South Sudanese outside there who have been pressing you, and we have been seeing a lot of comments from young people in the country, and you talk of, about high taxation. Do you think there is a possibilities of handling that situation? Thank you so much. Uh, before I talk about handling taxation, let me tell the people of South Sudan in the city how we are going to intervene to keep Juba City clean. Number one is an authority of the city council. We must acquire and provide all the necessary equipments to manage garbage. It is the primary responsibility of government not running around looking for companies who have no capacity. Where is the mandate of the government? In that, as I speak to you now, three days in office, with the little resources, we procured 10 trucks. They are down there. So in my plan, we want to ensure Juba is a big city, and we need to have at least 150 trucks that will be deployed across the blocks and the quarter councils to collect garbages on a daily basis. These 150 trucks will be divided. Each, each block will have 30. Munuki will have 30 the trucks. These trucks will be divided to the number of quarter councils. Each quarter council will have a number of trucks. Katoro will have 30. A Juba town block will have 30. This will make 90. There are special areas. We'll have 60 remaining trucks. We'll deploy 10 to Juba International Airport. This will be deployed to remain there. We'll deploy 10 to the national parliament, the area of the offices of the president and the residences of our senior officials. We'll deploy 10 trucks there. We will deploy five to the military headquarters in Bilfo. We will deploy five to Giada military headquarters. The markets, Jebel Market, Munuki Market, 
Kanya Kanya market and other markets will also have a number of trucks that will be designated for these markets. We'll have 10 reserve trucks that will only work with hotels. There are so many hotels in the city. They produce garbage. So we need to have trucks that are specifically assigned to collect garbages from the big hotels <laughs> around the city. Once we have those in place, there will be no dumping. The responsibility of the garbage collection will be decentralized. The vehicles and the resources will be given back to the people at the quarter councils. There will be designated places in a quarter council. There must be one place where this truck will be packed and the civilians, the population, will directly carry their garbage and they put on the truck. Once the truck is full, it goes to dump. There cannot be put on the ground. I'm well aware that in each counter council, there are empty spaces that belong to the people of South Sudan in the city council. There are some leaders in the, in, in the blocks and in the counter council that have tempered with those open spaces. We are going to retrieve all those open spaces in the city. But well, this belongs to the people of South Sudan. This belongs to the people of Juba City. As all. Biu Midan Bara or Hamel Musulia will go and find out in the records. Luligina Inu, Wahid Min Shakhela, as in Bolo, in a cell of public land, will expropriate his own plot, break it down, and give it to the people of the area. Minamul Tual, Lu Shakhela, Dakhali Denu, Biu Watan Bita Shab, Alo Midan Bara, Minaxi Rubetu, we are going to do it, we are going to be serious. The Ligina area in the mind of Midan. It's an interim arrangement. We are going to do it, 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 we are going to do it. All the citizens of a particular quarter council will bring their garbage to the chairman of the quarter council. So it is him now to coordinate, to ensure that the garbage. My is the leader. Every citizen collect your garbage, bring to the chairperson of the quarter council. Is a lofi midan? Okay. Is a mafi midan? He both better because he's the leader. It is him eh, to, to find out how to carry this garbage. So we're going to be serious and we're going to decentralize the resources to the people. They are going to be on the economy. Uh, we are also, by constitution, we are, we, as a level of government, we are given a mandate to regulate. I have heard the cry of the people of South Sudan, our entrepreneurs who are in the city council. Number one, I'm going to work closely with the South Sudan business union structures that, that are here in the city council. I have ordered the red cedar of the city council to be brought to my office. I'm going to go through and possibly come with the measures on how to respond to the public outcry. What are those measures? I feel that as an interim arrangement, once I receive the red schedule, and this is, going, this is an order is going to be compulsory on the officials of the city council. As a beginning, I will issue an order giving a leeway. We will reduce the taxes that are imposed, that are being collected by 20% to meet our constitutional obligation as a level of government to empower our indigenous entrepreneurs. So there will be a percentage that we will take out from our traders. And this is going to benefit our businessmen and women who are doing businesses in Juba City Council. But also as we do that, our nationals, our South Sudanese, all the people who are doing business city council should also commit to their corporate social responsibility. This is necessary. It's a win-win situation. Your Worship, there is this situation that you find most of the time from the traders, both wholesalers and retailers. They will tell you that South Sudan 
has nothing to produce. So most of the food items are imported from the neighboring countries. And they always level an accusation from the taxation unit from the borders, starting from normally point and other point. I know that is not your part from that aim, but do you think there is a role that you're going to play here so that these traders will not come and cry in your office and say we are being taxed high, starting from the borders? My competence and mandate is the city council. So the taxes that are within the jurisdiction of the city council is what I will look into if it is harming our business people and is indirectly or directly affecting our people. Within my mandate, I will be able to see how we can address it. But any other taxes that are not within the competence of the city council, I cannot talk about it. But what is important is that it has become a reality. There are a lot of idle people who are living with their in the city. You find in, in one house, there is only one person who is struggling to find food. You find 15 people, their job is to loiter around. They want to eat. They want to go to the toilet. They want to take bath. Everything is to be provided. So we have a big population of lazy South Sudanese who have become a liability on their relatives. These people are supposed to be in their villages. They're supposed to be productive. So also we are part of the problem because our level of generosity is harming us. Why do you keep around 15, 20 men in your house who have nothing to contribute, they only eat and sleep, walk around Juba? Why? So we have a problem here. We have a big population of people who are not productive. So Your Worship, to give you time to go and do some other office work, I know we have a lot of time to talk more. And South Sudanese will give you time also to see what you will deliver. Talking about road infrastructure in Juba City Council is one of the very fundamental issue, key issue and aspect of life. You'll find that majority of South Sudanese are driving, others, even those who are not driving, uh, the text public mean of transport going and you find the feeder road are not in a good shape. You say there are some tractors here for general cleaning campaign. Do you also have other vehicles that are going to handle the feeder road? Thank you so much. We are working to secure three key areas. Number one, we must have equipment and trucks for garbage management. A city council, it is necessary that we have road equipments for opening up and upgrading of roads in the city to be supported by the national and state governments. So it is also in our plan that the city must have its road equipments, government road equipments. So we, are, we have that in the plan. And also number three is how do we respond to security a city council? So our plan is that uh, we want to have, as soon as possible, not less than 20 security vehicles, Land Cruiser pickups. These vehicles will be used for security response. We have security forces who are deployed to the sectors within the city council. Sometimes they face problems. Some have all the vehicles that are broken down. Now, how do we support these security organs that are deployed to us in the city council? We must have security vehicles. So our plan is that we need to have 20 of those vehicles. Each block will have five uh, Land Cruisers pickups for the security organs within the block. So Juba will have five, Munuki will have five, Kathar will have five, and we'll have five at the headquarters of the city council by the security organs that are at the headquarters. This will be used for security backup. If there's a challenge in a particular block and there is need for enforcement, we must have vehicles ready that are owned by the city council as an authority, given to our security forces to respond to any threat that is there. So we have a plan. Your Worship, it is not everyone who like any leader. This means that in your leadership, not everyone, not 100% of South Sudanese will like what you will be doing. 
And uh, maybe 80% or 90% of South Sudanese will like what you'll be doing in Juba City Council. Looking into the action that you have just taken from uh, custom and some other part of uh, Nyokren, I remember there were some women who used to sail from the roadside and youth and all this. Now they're not able to run their business again along the roadside. These young people, they may not feel good at the end of the day if you have not given them a place to go and sell their products. There are some other use that will be supporting your idea that maybe it is not good to run some business from the roadside. What I'm trying to drive you to here is, in the due course that you will be working as the mayor of Juba City Council, what cooperation do you want from the members of the public? In exercising my authority as the acting mayor of Juba City Council, I'm not here to appease anybody. If there's anybody out there who thinks I'm here to appease anyone, no. It's a red line. I am here to address critical issues that are damaging our image as a country and as a people of South Sudan. I am here to, ad to contribute in addressing those issues that tarnishes our image as a country. We have to protect the image of our president, who is our symbol of authority. He has colleagues who are coming to South Sudan through Juba. How do we feel if our president have colleagues coming to our national capital? That's very dirty. How do we feel when our governor of Central Equatoria are the ministers of the state in a city that is dirty? So I'm not coming here to appease anybody. Anything that is unlawful, I will not compromise on it. The public roads, who doesn't know that this is a road? So the roads of Juba must be clean. No selling on the roads. There are markets in Juba. Everybody must find his or her way into those markets. There are ready markets in Juba. It is not that these people are selling on the roads because there's not, there are no markets, no. There are markets in Juba. So I'm directing that all those who are doing businesses, please, I'm not going to compromise and tolerate any compromise, collect yourself, find your way into those markets. Once those markets will not be enough, we are planning a city council to open more markets. That's when we'll address these challenges. But for now, I'm not negotiating with anybody. These are roads, it is illegal to sell on the road. And we're going to use our law enforcement agencies to ensure that this is enforced. How do you sell on the road? It's not possible. Inter, inter Junubi, Shari with Adola, the forest folk, raised with another more Rohina, Nas with another group more Rohina, the forest with Raja, my inter Mokalip, inter Mostabil, the Kalamasa, the Yamaganuni. So a South Danish Kalamitara has gone in a Silu Baramina. Nectar Mudola Bitana. You see, when we respect our roads, we are respecting our country. So Kalamita must be Bu Hajapi as Chari there. And I'm there, they move no assassin. We must be not only forced to be on Hajadil. Chari there, Hajas into Chari there. Eh? Minbara the Chari, then I went to Mushila Mazol. Like any been one inch of the road, the Kutu Kura Fogo, Nasilo do for October. Nakalish were done at the fighters and Jim Manzarlena. Kadola, Kasma of the Dola. So Zol so there, any mother, any is not my business. I will do what is correct. You see, a national, those who hate people have been there even before South Sudan became a country. I believe that hatred started somewhere in heaven, not even here. Fitna Bada Fogena, today we go to church every day. Our pastors and all of us as Christians, we are fighting the devil that we have not even seen. We don't know the, the content of their problem with God in heaven. So this is of visual matter as well. My brother here. Uh, me, I believe that as a Christian, some of these problems, these conspiracies, is started in heaven, and that's why, according to Bible, the devil is thrown down here. The devil was thrown down. Jadaw Satan said, "Didn't What happened? Uh, according to Bible, the devil started causing problem here, down here. Well, so leadership so. in heaven decided that we, we send Jesus Christ to go and save the world. According to my analysis." Jesus was sent actually to fight and crush the devil. 
You see what happened? Jesus was killed, was crucified. Thank you so much, Your Worship, uh, Emmanuel. And uh, Emmanuel also means God with us, right? Yes. So maybe God is with the Jewish City Council in another way. So what do you think, if you are given enough time in this office, do you think you will deliver the best? I don't want to be given enough time. And I don't want to lie. But as South Sudanese, what I want is that let us establish Juba City Council as an institution that must deliver quality services to the people of the city. Whether I am the one sitting here or not, it is a, a primary responsibility of government to deliver quality services to the people of the city. Our people are not suffering. Mafi moyo, tirila de galen ajine bini agamalusa. Amulo karar. Kalam tirila moyo bega mafi. Ma the problem is the city council. Why the prices of water is high in Juba town, in Juba city? The problem is the city council. Where are? Huh? Why don't we address the urban water system? The Nile is here. Bahar de awina. Lena kuli moyo be arfa be tirilat, and we have the Nile here, and we have an authority that is supposed to work with the partners to ensure that uh, water system. It's circulated in the city for the people. Okay, if we don't have resources to, to do that big project, why don't we, a city council, if we want to address the issue of high prices, water prices, why don't we acquire uh, water delivery tankers? The result is we're in city council. So, are you going to bring one? Our plan is that. In the long run, uh, we have a long uh, plan. At least, if we want to address the issue of high prices of water charged by the water tankers, eh? if we need to do an assessment, how many private water tankers are there in Juba? If it is 1,000, then if we really want to help our people in Juba City Council, the, lo the, lo the Juba City is a local government, the state government, and national government, we must do intervention. If there are 1,000 pr private water tankers in Juba City, eh, then as a government, it has to bring 3,000 water tankers. Once we have those trucks, we will regulate our own trucks. We will say, take the water, sell it in the areas at 300 pounds. This will force these private water tankers to drop their own prices. But you cannot regulate water tankers, and you are not providing. Thank you so much, Your Worship. I believe we have a lot to discuss, as I continue to mention. But we believe that you will continue to be there and we will evaluate after maybe some time. Continue to come to visit you and share with the people of South Sudan what you have been delivering in the due course that you will be in the office. Now, in less than one minute, your message to South Sudanese. My message to the people of South Sudan is that as I sit here, feel free, the office of the mayor is a public office that belongs to all the people of South Sudan. So you are, the office is going to open for all South Sudanese 24 hours. Number two, this country to move on, we need to restore sustainable security so that there is peace and development. In that, let us support our president in all his efforts to ensure that peace returns to the country. As people of Central Equatorial State, we have only one governor now called Emmanuel Adel Anthony and trusted by the president to administer Central Equatorial State. So as people of Central Equatorial, as political leaders of Central Equatorial, let us support our governor. This business of running around in three places in bus, conspiracies, cannot help. The governor is entrusted by the president. So if we work against the governor, we are indirectly working against the president. Because the governor is the official representative of the president in the state. Thank you so much for following this special edition coming to you right here, uh, where we talk about the activities of Juba City Council. And it has been a pleasure having his worship, the acting mayor of Juba City Council, Emmanuel Kamis Richard, and also who double as the commissioner of Lanya County. For me, Majur Cholkur and my colleague, the technical team, we do say it honorable.
Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.